Hello YouTube. This is the Backwoods Way and I uh, just wanted to do a small video on home defense but in this video we're just going to talk about some handguns. i um, here with a friend of mine and he has a, a wide variety of guns and he wanted to show you, I wanted him to show you a few of his choice weapons for an off-the-grid uh, home defense application. So uh, he has a few weapons here that he's going to talk about. So. And what two weapons do you have here? Now here again, this is the Smith & Wesson Model 10. It's a basic revolver. It fires a 38 Special cartridge. This was carried by the military and the police for a good 20 to 30 years. You can get them used, like I got this one, very reasonable. It's a good starter gun. Uh, revolvers are basically a great gun because once you load them and you close them, they shoot. Okay? This, this happens to be a double action. What that means is if you were f it was a single action gun you'd have to cock it each time and then press the trigger to fire it. But double action the trigger will actually cock the hammer back and fires. Now <clears throat> why that's important in a shooting situation if something does go wrong and a, a round does not go off nothing complicated to do with a revolver other than to pull the trigger a second time and it, and it you know, so you just keep pulling the trigger until something fires. Um, again, I w and I wanted to talk about two different types of ammunition that that you would you would use. This is what they call a full metal jacket. It's a uh, or a ball round. Okay. You can see that. Yep. Okay. Um, this is great for practice. Um, why you don't want to use this in a defensive situation, especially in close quarters, because it will go through walls, it will go through people and through walls, and you could have collateral damage. So not so great for a an app where you would have close na close neighbors or kids in the bedroom next, you know, nearby. Exactly. Okay. okay. Uh, what you want to use is what they call a hollow point. This is a hollow point round. This happens to be a 38 special hollow point. And what that does is that round, when it hits an object, this flattens out and expands. So when it enters a body, okay, either it depends on what kind of predator you're after, two-legged or four-legged, when it enters the body, it's going to be a small hole, and when it exits, it's going to be a much larger mass, okay? Okay. Um, and then it won't go through walls. That's the advantage of using a, uh, uh, a hollow point. It has okay. more stopping power Right. than a full metal jacket. I think okay? that's the next one point. Okay. Okay. So you you want to make sure when you you're keeping this for self defense, you you want to keep a a uh, a hollow point loaded. Okay. And that's as easy as it is to load a revolver. Okay. And what's no the problem. advantage of having a, a revolver over the 1911? Okay. The 1911 uh, is <coughs> was a gun that's been in use since 1911. It was designed for the military. The military has used it for over a hundred years now. Uh, well, yeah, just about a hundred years. Uh, used by special forces. This happens to be a Taurus. Uh, you can get called the original is the Colt. Um, you, you can spend this one is under five hundred dollars, and you can spend up to two thousand dollars on a 1911. Uh, the advantages. Well, the the. The disadvantage of a of a of a nineteen of an automatic semi automatic as opposed to a a revolver. A little bit more complicated to use. Okay. Okay. This is very straightforward. You lower it just like load it just like in the westerns and you're ready to go. Okay, you're ready to rock and roll. Uh with a semi automatic you have a magazine. You have to actually load the magazine with rounds, okay? And load the magazine in. You can see the, the, the bullet's ready to be chambered. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the disadvantage of a, of a 1911 is there's different levels of uh, different levels stages that you can carry a gun in. Okay. Uh, some people don't like to leave. They they leave the chamber empty, and so that if they need to fire it, okay, they have to rack it and then load that first. And, and that could possibly... We're back again now. Uh, <clears throat> so, as, as I was explaining, okay, there's different w ways you can carry a 1911. 
but the, the, the thing it's most famous for, the term you may have heard it is locked, cocked, uh, cocked and locked, okay? So when you, I'm uh, just play it safe here, okay? You would load your weapon, there was, there was a round in there, it would be loaded into position, firing position, and this is a safety. Right here, this this gun happens to be have an ambidextrous safety, so you can get it if you're a lefty, you can get it from both sides. So at this point, with that safety up, this gun will not fire. Okay, and it has a couple other safeties. This is called the beaver tail safety, right here. So if your hand is not on the on the uh, the handle on the grip itself, it will not fire. Okay, and of course, there's the trigger safety. So to use this weapon, what you need to do is flip the safety down, and now it's it's ready to, to shoot. You're in condition one. That's what that's called, condition one. Um, so <clears throat> the safety is is of utmost importance when you're carrying the gun. Some people don't like to carry something cocked and locked. Uh, it, it might be a little bit more dangerous, but uh, you're ready to shoot if something should happen. Uh, with the revolver, one, it's you never carry it in a cock mode. It's always down, especially a double action, like I mentioned, because you can pull it back and it cocks itself. So, it's double check and make sure it's empty, so you can just shoot it, okay? And never put your finger in the trigger until you're ready to destroy something, okay? Until you're on target. That's where you always carry a weapon, okay? So. Like I said, uh, you carry this one cocked and locked. It's empty. Um, and this is a 45 caliber. Uh, again, this is what's used by the military. Uh, and this was a 38 special. Okay, uh, and what's the difference in price between these two firearms? Okay, this one, like I said, you can get these used. They're very plentiful because they were used by the police. And uh, uh, you can see this one has holster wear. Okay, on both sides. Uh, so a gun, a used gun like this, will run you anywhere from 120 to 200 dollars. Mm, that's Depends. pretty reasonable. That's did reasonable. You, did you do any modifications to it? None, other than uh, this one came with this grip, but the you rubber might grip? the rubber grip. It's called a, a Packmeyer grip. And do you prefer the rubber grip, or do you like? Yes, it the takes up the shock when shooting, and it doesn't hurt your hand as much. Okay, anything to do with slippage? Like if you're, I mean, I'd imagine in a real situation you'd be sweaty. Your hands would be sweating, and uh, you you know, yep. the rubber might help in that yep. situation. It does. Mo most grips are uh, ridged. Okay, you can even see it on the on the on the 1911 to help you with the gripping. Okay, so it, it doesn't come loose. If someone was to buy a gun, let's say used that needed some work, and let's say it needed to be reblued, is that an expensive thing to do? Uh, it can be. It, I can, if I want to just reblue, uh, Smith and Wesson will do it for about two hundred dollars. Okay. I uh, didn't feel that that was worth it, not for what I wanted the gun for. Uh, one of the nice things about Smith and Wesson is a lifetime guarantee. So even though this gun was actually manufactured in the '30s, if that had a malfunction that I needed to send it back, it would be totally covered but in the warranty. See, now for me, that's a huge point for our frugal people out there. Um, you know, who like to buy craftsman tools because they know they can get them replaced for free. Smith & Wesson people, that's the way to go. Yes. Okay, excellent. And hopefully we'll get some clips of you or I or somebody firing these weapons. And uh, So this has been the Backwoods Way. These are, uh, what are these two handguns again? This is a Smith & Wesson Model 10, and this is a Taurus. But it's a 1911. This is 45 caliber. This is 38 special. Excellent. So thank you very much. Please uh, subscribe. Please ask your friends to subscribe. Please post this to your Facebook. And thank you very much. The best. <laughs>